Welcome to episode three of the weekly duck migration forecast, 19 through 25 October. Got some exciting news this week uh, about some cold air moving into the Dakotas and kind of stalling out at about um, the latitude of Iowa. Unfortunately, the east stays relatively warm, but we do have a little bit of cold and some snow coming that looks like it'll push birds. But first, I'm going to cover a couple qu good questions from this week uh, that came in at weekly duck migration forecast at gmail.com. Andrew from the Great Lakes region asks, can you explain a reverse migration a bit more in depth? And will dabblers stay at a location if the conditions are right, or will instincts kick in and then tell them to keep pushing south no matter what? This is a good question. The reverse migration one is a little difficult. Really what goes on there is that um, sometimes birds will move south. Um, they may not find uh, adequate resources. Disturbance may be too high. And when temperatures moderate, um, they'll actually move back north somewhat. If you think about it, once there's a freeze line set up or a snow line where uh, birds are, a lot of birds are below that location, um, they actually, people think about, you know, what happens at that point if they run out of food, um, if they have too much disturbance, will they just move south? Well, also think that they don't have to move south. They can move east and west as well along that line. Um, and it appears from uh, some anecdotal evidence as well as some research that, that that occurs quite a bit. Then if there's a huge thaw uh, and maybe a rain event, uh, birds can make a movement back north to find food where they were previously. So it's not reverse migration, I don't think is really that well documented, but don't think of uh, movement of these ducks as linear, always linear north to south, that once they get to a certain latitude, they're gonna follow food uh, resources as well as lack of disturbance to try to find places where they can eat and rest without much disturbance. Um, and then this idea of, you know, once conditions are good and dabblers get to a certain point, will they just stay at that location or will they keep pushing south no matter what? Think of it this way. Um, migration's risky. Uh, ducks leaving a place that they know where there's refuge and where there's food and going to some place that they do not know further south um, is, a, is a large risk. And folks that hunt those migrations know that, that that's when you kill ducks, right? Because these are just naive ducks that don't know their area and they're much more uh, easily fooled into coming into a spread than those that are quote unquote stale. Um, these ducks are just going back north when they're done to breed. So most of them don't go uh, any further south than they have to. This is definitely true of mallards to a large degree more than some of the other species even. But if they're just going back north to breed, they only go as far south as they have to. Um, does that mean that some birds don't push south um, and go to kind of ancestral wintering grounds? No, that there are ducks that still make those big movements um, and are well below the freeze line um, and well, you know, well, well far south of where they really need to be. That still happens as well. But for the most part, these ducks are going to stick as far north um, as they possibly can, because once spring comes, they're just going back. So why make that long trek? So good question, Andrew. Thank you. Jim from Alabama writes, you don't talk about wood ducks or blue winged teal. Why not? And this is a good question for, for somebody from Alabama, that place that does shoot a lot of wood ducks. I'll, ta I'll tackle blue winged teal first. Uh, we did calculate weather severity indices for blue winged teal, but it turns out that the what really makes them migrate is a uh, photo period or how long is the day. So once the days get short, they just go. That was that that explained blue winged teal migration more than weather. That doesn't mean that weather doesn't have some influence on them, just that photo period or length of day is the strongest driver. Um, and so they're pretty much out of town, um, you know, by the time we get into this October forecast, most of them have moved out. Now, this last weekend in Western New York, where we're at um, during the duck opener, it's been really, really mild here. And we saw, you know, a handful of blue wing teal flying around. And I know some guys uh, did shoot some blue wings this year, which is relatively uncommon for us uh, for the third week of October. It occurs, but there's the majority of those blue wings, 90% of them have moved 
out by that point. So we don't do a migration forecast for blue wings because it's really not based mostly on weather. Wood ducks are difficult to count. So the data that we've used to generate our models um, comes from you know, aerial surveys uh, to a large degree, as well as some ground surveys. And those just don't do a good job always of, of counting uh, wood ducks in a lot of the forested and thick scrub shrub wetlands they use. So we kind of hope to work with work on wood ducks in the future um, using other data sets. But for now, um, they're not included. But you should consider them, you know, earlier than those widgeon and, and green wing teal, um, which are, are in our models here, the earliest ones that migrate out. So good questions. Keep them coming. Thanks, folks. So let's jump into the summary for the week. Uh, the Mississippi Flyway, there's a, this is a first good cold front of the year moving into the northern prairies. It pushes to about mid-Iowa, and there's some snow with it. Um, I expect to see um, a pretty good push of birds this week. Uh, when we get to the, the charts that show what the timing of that is, I'll give a little more detail. The Atlantic Flyway really remains balmy, and there's you know near 70 degree temperatures Fahrenheit temperatures as north as Ottawa, Ontario in the coming week. Uh, where we're at in Syracuse, New York here, we're going to be around 75. So not really much that's going to cause any major movement of birds in the Atlantic Flyway. A bunch of recent rains have helped wetlands recover in the area from Maine to New Jersey, uh, but the Lake Plain in New York and eastern Pennsylvania remain extremely dry. Uh, fortunately, the 10-day the forecast uh, using the European model calls for rain throughout that kind of drought-stricken region, um, and that might help ducks find some feeding habitat and, and stay north for a bit, especially coupled with those warm temperatures. So here's the 10-day rain accumulation forecast, and if we just look at that swath of kind of pink color, um, that's a really area that's been hit by a lot of drought, and so hopefully that um, fills some wetlands, um, provides some hunting opportunity um, for some folks in those regions that have really struggled with water. Um, and birds are really concentrated right now. And with a lot of seasons opening throughout those areas, um, it's a lot of pressure on birds and, and may actually cause them to move out. Uh, a lot of these wetlands um, that are relatively dry. Uh, so, you know, you got concentrated hunters because some wetlands are dry and then the ducks don't have a lot of options. So, and, and guys, just folks you generally just don't show restraint in areas that have wide open seven day a week hunting. So these birds are just getting a ton of pressure right now. So hopefully this rain um, spreads them out and keeps them around for a, a little bit longer, because um, if not, they're going to push out to other places probably. So let's uh, dive right into the forecast for the week. This is for mallard and, and black duck. And uh, we can see some actual blue showing up. Um, that's that cold that's going to push into the Dakotas um, late in the week on, um, you know, 22nd, 23rd. So I think that's um, Thursday, Friday look like your really good uh, opportunities. Um, if you're in that, you know, prairies, upper Midwest region, I'd keep a good eye on uh, movements of mallards. These these switches from increasing to decreasing or red to blue at a location also tend to be um, times when when ducks become susceptible to to harvest because some of their they shuffle around because their feeding areas freeze up and such too. Um, they're also looking at hitting fields, cornfields, and, and other grain fields where they can to put you know some some fat on quickly um, to be able to move out when the conditions really get bad. So it looks like some opportunity this week for sure, and especially late in the week where mallard and black duck uh, may be making a move. Obviously, there's not black duck out west there, really. So this is mostly a mallard forecast here. And as you look to the east, it's it's downright ugly right now for, for any movement of birds. So I wouldn't expect much to be happening in the east with mallards or black ducks. If we make the comparison to 2019 for mallards, um, if we look at around Thursday night in 2020 this year, we see that that you know those those numbers go well not well above the threshold, but they go above the threshold. And this is much different than 2019. So we would expect a little bit stronger movement early of mallard out of uh, 
the Dakotas and maybe down into Iowa and northern Missouri late in the week. I think they should be picking up some some birds um, from the Dakotas region. If we look at pintails, we're equally going to see a pretty strong movement out from the west. Um, they're a little more sensitive to uh, weather changes than mallards, so pretty expectation would be a pretty good push of pintail um, out of the Dakotas, and you know even some numbers that are slightly below the weather severity index threshold as, as far south as, as Des Moines, Iowa. Um, again, my expectation is that latitudes like Missouri would pick up some pintails this week, but those numbers in Iowa aren't that strong. So I think that a lot of a lot of pintails are still going to be hanging um, pretty far, pretty far north, just moving out of that core um, prairie area where it's going to get pretty cold and pretty snowy later in the week. Right, and if we compare this to last year for Devil's Lake, North Dakota. Um, there was an earlier kind of bump in weather severity index last year, but this one in 2020 um, is, you know, kind of going exponential here pretty quickly. So well beyond the threshold. And so pintails to, to a large degree should be moving out of this area and into places further south. But when we compare this to the east uh, in a location where a lot of eastern uh, pintails move through in the east, which is kind of the central New York Finger Lakes region of New York, and we look at that minus four threshold, um, we're not near it for, we weren't near it in 2019, and we're nowhere near it again in 2020 at this point. So I think whatever pintails are around should should hang around pending, uh, pending pressure from folks. And if we get some rain again, it might help them feed on some of those shallow areas on some of those wetland seeds that were produced with the drought this summer. Now we start to progress into those ducks that'll leave a little bit earlier, right? We should see really a good movement of gadwall. And this is the type of step um, blue color that you'll see as the season goes on where you, where, when you get a real nice um, steady um, cold front that's moving in with some snow. So I'd expect gadwall to move again to a little bit greater degree than the pintails and definitely more than the mallards. So a good push of gadwall this week. And then shovel are even a little more sensitive with a threshold of, of a west weather severity index of minus nine. So anything um, above minus nine, they start to move on. So kind of very similar. It's it's slightly different than the gadwall. They're a little more sensitive. And in the east, I mean these these numbers of minus eight over here in Ottawa are very subtle. You know, the only thing that might really move in the east are some widgeon and green winged teal out of the more most northern districts of Ontario and Quebec. But again, those numbers are just below that weather severity index. So the, the, the amount of movement is going to be limited. Um, my expectation for a state like Missouri at this point, um, latitudes of like, you know, Illinois, um, that the biggest push of ducks you're going to see this week are going to be widgeon and green wing teal moving in. And, um, and, and definitely a lot of those birds moving out of the most northern areas in the Mississippi Flyway. So what do river gauges look like? Um, if we look at last week's, there's a lot of browns and reds in the, in the northeast U.S. And again, from kind of Maine to New Jersey, that area recovered. Um, but in the eastern Pennsylvania and Lake Plain, of uh, of New York, it's it's where there's you know a fair amount of waterfall that migrate through to go down the Atlantic coast. There's quite a bit of drought. There's a little bit of drought in the Midwest areas and some rivers that hasn't changed, but um, not kind of widespread how it is in the East. The rainwater from um, the tropical storms and, and hurricane last week that came up through the Gulf and up kind of the East Coast um, have subsided a little bit. Um, there's less really dark, you know, black dots and dark blues and a lot more light blues, but still a lot of water in the southeast. So all these types of things will affect to some extent where birds stay as well because of their access to food. In an episode one, uh, I talked about how Eurasian snow cover 
or Siberian snow cover in October and how quickly it expands has an effect on high and low pressure systems and quickly advancing snow cover in this part of the world can cause cold outbreaks into eastern North America over the Mississippi and Atlantic flyways. Uh, a lot of that is December, January when uh, it really matters for our southern waterfall hunters. If we look at last week's, um, I think this is from October 12th on the left, um, I don't have the October 18th data yet, but uh, on the left side here, you can see that although the snow extent looks pretty pretty good on the right side, uh, relative to past years, it's accumulating um, quite a bit slower, you know, more near the mean. And so, but we'll have to watch it. May, it sometimes it catches up, um, but the thought is here is it's set up to, to snow quite a bit based on available open water in the Arctic, um, but that the inertia of a of a warm planet is actually holding um, snow cover back kind of on that western side of of Siberia that it's just it just can't get cold enough to snow and accumulate and create pressure systems that cause a, a wobbly jet stream or a polar vortex disruption so we'll keep an eye on this because this has a chance to really affect what's going to occur in December at this point long term forecast wise so that's this week's forecast, folks. Uh, email me your questions. Keep them coming. Uh, weekly duck migration forecast at gmail.com. And remember to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Um, and I'm going to be doing these weekly on Sunday or Monday morning until the end of January. So everybody have a good week. I hope that folks in the Mississippi Flyway see some new migrants uh, that we we forecasted. And uh, be safe and shoot straight. Have a great week. See you next week, folks. Bye.